Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 12 of the Mythical Man Month, which is called Sharp Tools. To be honest, this chapter is perhaps less relevant in today's development environment, as a big chunk is about managing a team that has to budget the use of custom hardware for a new software program. And when I say use of custom hardware, we're talking about a computer in a computer room that has a physical tape library to run through programs and so on. That being said, it's a vaguely interesting look at how development used to be done, and so if that topic might interest you, I'd encourage you to read it. What I will focus on are the two more modern tools which the author highlights that are still relevant today, high-level programming languages and interactive programming. Interactive programming, from what I understand, means the ability to freeze and step through the sequences of your program as it is running. This is a huge advantage since if you experience any unexpected behavior, you can stop the program at any point and examine the state of the data or whatever operations are being done to see where a diversion from the happy path is occurring. Personally, I've had a really good experience with debuggers of this sort and it's just immensely, it basically makes it possible to understand what's going on in a program at a given point in time with a given set of data being passed to it and so on. And so it, it definitely makes a huge difference versus the absence of that where you would just sort of have to guess what's happening. So next we have a whole slew of high level programming languages in existence today that when executed will compile down into lower level languages and thus spare you a significant amount of lines of code that need to be written. So this is an improvement on a couple levels. The first is what I just said, that you can accomplish a lot more with fewer lines of code. So things like garbage collection, memory allocation, and often even types are handled for you under the hood. The other upside of high-level languages is that because the languages themselves are implemented very thoroughly, you don't have to worry about a whole slew of problems that might arise if you are having to implement low-level aspects of a program manually. So high-level languages are an absolute win for the industry in the majority of projects, but there are some downsides that are worth mentioning for the sake of being balanced. First, high-level languages abstract away enough detail that some feel it takes away too much control. Second, Object code is fairly big. And third, it results in programs that are too slow. In terms of the first objection, if this is a concern, one can be served by identifying the actual code that apparently takes away too much from the engineer and re-implement that feature alone in a low level, in a low level language, if such a thing is needed. To the second, and this is also being improved over time as the creators of languages are always refining in subsequent versions. And for the last objection related to speed versus low level language counterparts, the combination of the last point about languages becoming more and more efficient over time, coupled with the plummeting price of computing power, suggests that the best solution is to run a high level language on the beefiest servers you can as Computing power is likely to be significantly cheaper than the cost of having a team develop a program system in low-level languages. There are a couple other advantages here as well. The first is that debugging is going to be a lot easier, since bugs will arise from explicitly implemented program logic rather than tacit operations like garbage collection and memory allocation, etc. And the final benefit that comes to mind for using high-level languages is that they're more accessible to a wider audience and that will allow your developers to be more productive to be productive more quickly in newer languages as they don't have to learn the intricacies of lower level operations. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.